Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month, I thought we would talk about accessing your Plex server through a personal VPN. And what prompted this is that Apple recently updated the Apple TV to support the use of VPN clients on the Apple TV hardware natively without having to do any special hacks or tricks or anything like that. And what you're going to see today will also work on a lot of Android TV devices like the Walmart on box here that I have the remote for, but also devices like the NVIDIA Shield. And why you might want to do this is because perhaps you don't want to open up ports on your router to the outside world. In my case, I only share my Plex server with myself, and there's no need to have my Plex server out on the internet if it's only me accessing it. So typically what I do is when I'm out of the house, I load up my Tailscale VPN and I can zap right in and be able to get access to my Plex server. But that is typically done on my phone or my laptop. But now that we can get a VPN client working on the Apple TV, we can actually run TV boxes in the same way. And I thought it might be fun to demonstrate this VPN use case using this Apple TV here. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it is uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see how we can get our Apple TV connected to a Plex server over a personal VPN. Now, just to set the stage for what we're working on today, over at my mom's house about 10 miles away, I've got a Synology NAS that, in full disclosure, Synology sent to the channel free of charge. And on that NAS, I back up a lot of data from my house here to her so I can get it off-site on something that I have direct control over. I did a video on that project recently. And that NAS is locked securely behind her router. There is no open ports into it. And as you can see here, the Plex server that I installed in a Docker container on that NAS is not accessible because I don't have UPnP enabled on her router. And sure enough, if we go over to the control panel on that particular device, you'll see that it is not available to Plex either. So there's no way to route in without having some kind of VPN client going. Now, you have a lot of options for VPN clients. Some are built into the router that you might have. Others involve some software that you might install. My pick has been Tailscale, and I did a pretty extensive video about how Tailscale works. And what I like about Tailscale is that it is simple, it is very secure, you can actually share individual computers with other people if you don't want to share your whole network. It's a very slick way to get a very quick and easy VPN up and running on your network. Although this will largely work the same no matter which personal VPN client you choose. And I'm sure down in the comments section, a lot of you will have different ideas as to which one to pick out. But the nice thing is, is that there is a Tailscale client on the Apple TV along with Android TV. And what I'm going to do now is get that client installed on the Apple TV so we can get access to my mom's server. So let's have at it. All right, so Tailscale is now installed, and we can go ahead here and install the VPN configuration. This set of permissions is likely something that you'll have to go through on whatever client you choose for your personal VPN on your Apple TV. I'll click Allow here. And what I need to do next is connect this to my Tailscale network. And when I click Connect here, what it's going to do is pop up a QR code that I scan with my phone to log into my account on Tailscale. And once I'm there, the Apple TV will be added to my Tailscale network. So let me get this thing going, and I'll show you what happens next. All right, so I'm logged in, and now my Apple TV here is on my Tailscale network. It can now communicate with my mom's Synology NAS at the other end of town. And if we jump over here, the only difference you're going to notice on your Apple TV is that you will see a little VPN icon there at the top. And with Tailscale, at least, it will not route your internet traffic through its VPN client. So anything you're doing normally with Netflix or whatever is just going to go out via the internet like it typically does. But when we need to connect to something within the Tailscale network, it'll route through that client. Now, if we go over to Plex here, and we reconnect, uh, what we should see here in a second after I uh, jump back into my list of servers is that my mom's Plex server is now accessible to us. I can actually get onto the content 
that I have loaded up there. So I've got a couple of movies here, including a Blu-ray MKV. I got The Wizard here, along with some Bluey episodes that I recorded earlier, and I'm able now to access all of this. Now, what's interesting is that uh, this is going to appear to the Plex server like a remote connection. So if I wanted to maintain the bit rate, the original quality bit rate, what we may want to do is go into our settings here and just adjust that so I can get the full quality. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because my mom has symmetrical fiber at her house. She has a 500 megabit connection from Frontier. It's actually pretty reasonably priced, and she has that going upstream. So what I'm going to do here is just set internet streaming to maximum, and that's the setting at least on the Apple TV. So if we go ahead and play that Blu-ray MKV file, we'll get the full bit rate like it would be if we were sitting at home off my local server. Let's take a look at that next. All right, so let's play this video file here. I'm going to click on play. Now remember, it's pulling this over the internet, not from my local network, but we're using the Tailscale VPN to do it. You saw how quickly that just popped up. Let me go over to the control panel here. And what we're seeing is that we are getting a direct play running at 19 megabits per second. And the IP here is the Tailscale VPN IP because her Synology NAS is located at her house and not here at mine. But as you can see, we're able to maintain 19 megabits per second over the internet without any transcoding going on, including the DTS HD audio getting passed through directly to the Apple TV here as well. And what's neat about using one of these private personal VPN services is just how seamless these seem to work with Plex. Before I was using Tailscale, I was logging into my router remotely with a VPN client, and it was a very similar experience. It just pops up and starts working, whereas it would not before because we had the ports closed on the router. Now, one of the advantages of using Tailscale for this project is that you can limit what people from the outside get access to. So for example, I can choose to share my Plex server with somebody, but nothing else on the local network. So what happens with a lot of consumer routers that have a VPN server built in is that when people dial into that VPN server, they have access to the entire local network. Here, they only get access to your Plex server, and that is it. Tailscale is free if you have less than 100 devices on it. So I think for most uses like this one, it should uh, be able to be used for free. And one of the nice things about it is that I don't notice much of a bandwidth limitation, if any, uh, in using it, especially for the backups that I've been doing with it. So that's been working out pretty nicely here so far. And as you saw, it's just pretty much a plug and play kind of scenario here. Once you've got the client running on both ends, it just seems to work. Now, of course, there are personal VPN clients available on mobile devices. Tailscale, for example, is available on Android and iOS. I've got it installed on my iPhone here. We're connecting up just fine to my mom's Plex server. I can select that movie we were watching before and very quickly spin it up on my phone, just like we did on the Apple TV a second ago. And what's great about these personal VPN options is that because we're now seeing more compatibility on TV boxes, it makes it easier if you did want to take your Plex server off the public internet to be able to do that and not lose any functionality. Again, my experience with this has been once you get logged into the network where your Plex server resides, it just seems to find it and work. And that's been the case for a number of years now. So it's just another option to consider, especially if you're just sharing it with yourself when you're out on the road. It just allows you to access things in a way that you have a little more control over. And I'm always in favor of that. So check it out. Again, it's going to work with just about any personal VPN client. Remember, personal VPNs are different than the VPN services you see advertised ad nauseum across the uh, YouTube space here. Typically, the way a personal VPN works is that you log into your home network from the outside, and that is uh, what we were doing here today. But it works great on Apple TV. You should be able to get it working on Android TV without issue. Fire TV is doable, but you may have to sideload some stuff on. I don't think this works with Roku, though. But in my testing, even the lower-end Android TV boxes, like the one you can get at Walmart for 20 bucks, the Onbox, 
all seem to work well with tail scale. So have at it, give it a try, see if it works for you. And I just wanted to put that out there to give you some ideas to think about, especially if you don't have a lot of people accessing your Plex server. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Zybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.